Saint Luke chapter 9, verses 18 to 27. Barakimo. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowd say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still other, others, that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, the Christ of God. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by his elders, chief priests and teachers of the law. And he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, he must deny, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. What is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. I tell you the truth. In some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Barakimon. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one true God. Respected priests, teachers, and friends, let us take a few minutes to meditate on these verses from St. Luke chapter nine. Today, let's focus on who Jesus is and what that means to us. I would like to divide this into three sections, who, how, and us. Firstly, from verses 18 to 20, we can find out who Jesus is. Peter says he is Christ of God, Christ as in Messiah, which in Greek means anointed. He is the anointed one of God. He's not just a man or a prophet like the crowd said. He's the savior that the prophets spoke about in the Old Testament. Peter, who followed and loved Jesus, understood that Jesus is the Christ of God. In the same way, we should also discover who Jesus is for us. This is the first step to our belief. Secondly, if you read verse 22, you can see how Jesus loved us. Knowing who he, who he is is not enough, but understanding what he did for us will help us to know how much he loved us. The world denied him, yet he came to die for the world. He did not want us to perish, but wanted us to be in heaven with him. This is what we believe and pray when we proclaim, and was crucified for us, and upon Pontius Pilate, and suffered, and died, and was buried, and the third day he rose again in the 19 Creed. Lastly, from verse 23 to 27, let's focus on what all this should mean for us. We must understand that Jesus requires from us is not like what the world wants from us. It is transformation from selfish to selfless, like Jesus has shown us. The world is filled with many desires that we have to stay away from. First, Adam proved by nature that humans are selfish and focus on selfish desires. But Jesus came and showed us the virtue of selflessness by sacrificing himself for our sins. Even though Jesus did not sin, he was nailed on the cross as a punishment that led to death. He took our sins to the cross by the, by, and by example, we ourselves need to carry our own cross day by day. We also need to put our selfish desires and sin on this cross. Day by day, our aim is trying to be like Jesus, selfish to selfless. I hope that we can all be selfless in our lives. I want to end with this verse. St. John chapter 15, verses 12 to 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God.